What is up guys and welcome to the South Coast. On today's video, I'm gonna do a breakdown of my chainsaw kit, so y'all stay tuned. All right guys, so I've been doing a bunch of chainsaw work here lately out at the South Coast property at our uh, South Coast home build where we're building our home. By the way, go check out that uh, YouTube channel. I'm gonna have it linked down in the description. Uh, basically start a second YouTube channel following the build of our family home. But been doing some chainsaw work at the property where we're building that home, uh, namely cutting up some white oak trees. Uh, one of them was a blowdown and one of them I uh, went ahead and cut down myself to use um, for some beams and uh, some framing, some timber framing details on the home build. So I figured while I've been in that chainsawing mode, I'd go ahead and run down a breakdown of all the equipment that I bring whenever I go doing chainsaw work. So. Obviously chainsaw, we'll show you that in a second. This right here, this is, uh, I think they're originally made by a company called Dolmar, uh, so a lot of people call them Dolmar uh, gas cans. But basically what it is, it's a gas can on one side and a chainsaw oil can on the other side. Uh, it's about a two to one ratio because generally speaking, that's about how fast you go through fuel to your chainsaw oil when you're running a chainsaw. So in this side, I keep uh, non-ethanol gasoline mixed with the steel, um, the silver bottle, I forget exactly what it's called, uh, the Ultra, whatever their, uh, the steel brand of two-stroke oil is, mixed in the proper ratios in this side of the can. This side, I also use the steel um, bar and chain oil, the, which also comes in a silver bottle. So. That's what I use as far as my fuel and oil. Um, I'm gonna link as many of these products down in the description. They'll all be Amazon affiliate links. The price is the same for you, but it helps the channel. I get a little bit of a kickback from all those sales using those links. Helps the channel grow, helps me continue to make these videos and upgrade my equipment. I'm tr really trying to get some upgraded equipment, uh, make these videos a little bit better as I go along. So using those links down in the description is a big help for that. So first things first, fuel and oil. I keep a bungee on it like this, just for when I have it in the back of my truck. There's one time where this toppled over. I didn't have this cap on the oil side and bar and chain oil basically flooded the back of my truck. So that was less than ideal. Keep a bungee on it so I can bungee it to one of the little uh, tie down spots in the back of the truck. Chainsaw I use is a steel MS30 or MS362. Um, this is before it went to the Mtronic non-adjustable carburetor. This one still has the, uh, the three adjustments there for the carburetor. I haven't had to make any carburetor adjustments. Uh, I think I've had this saw probably three or four years or so, um, and it is great. I'm not a big chainsaw expert, but I know this saw does great. I keep a 20 inch bar with the um, yellow link, the yellow link chain on there. I believe it is the, it's not the anti kickback chain. It's just a standard, standard chain for these steel saws, uh, steel brand bar, steel brand chain. Next part of my kit, I keep this bundled up, um, basically just to keep it in a nice small package. Get it undone here, just to the side for now. So, I run basically, basically just a rigger's belt with a scabbard for my uh, small forest axe. I'll show you that in a minute. The belt clip for a silky Zubat. I'll show you that saw in a moment as well. And I also clip this Spencer logging tape on the belt whenever I'm out and about. This is a really good tape for measuring logs. Uh, I've been cutting these white oaks to certain lengths so we can get the right length beams out of them. And uh, this is sort of indispensable for that. Put, have a basically a bent over horseshoe nail on this side 
stick that into the log. You can walk away from it with your tape. It'll pay out the tape as you go. You get your measurement, and then you just tug on, tug on this end of the tape. That horseshoe nail will pop out, and your tape will retract to you. Super nice. Like I said, just standard belt. Uh, the axe scabbard. This came from came from uh, Grizzly Peak Enterprises. I'll put a link for them down in the description. I run a, we'll get to it in a second, but I run a Grand Force Brooks small forest axe and it fits in this number four size axe scabbard. Alright, this is probably one of the biggest pieces of kit that I always make sure I have with me my chainsaw chaps. These are the Steel Promark brand. There's other brands. Uh, Steel has a couple different uh, variations of these chaps, but I like these Promark ones. They, they're holding up well. Um, they have a pocket on this side and they just sort of, it's basically like an apron for your legs. Um, it's got a bunch of fibers running in here to where if the saw breaks through this outer layer, those fibers will bind that chain up and keep you from cutting yourself. In the pocket of these chaps, I run a scrunch tool, which I really, I really should drill a hole in this and put a piece of paracord or something with a clip to clip it onto my belt so it's not in this pocket. I think having it in this pocket is a little bit of a liability. A, because I can stab myself a lot easier with it in there and it could fall out of this pocket easier than if it was clipped onto the belt. So that's something I'll probably do in the future. I also keep three wedges with me. As you can see, I'm a fairly inexperienced chainsaw operator, tree feller when it comes to the grand scheme of things. I tend to nick these wedges a little bit. <clears throat> I think I probably am not super great at reading the uh, compression and tension in certain situations in the trees and logs that I'm cutting, so I sometimes have to rely on these wedges to give my bar and chain the clearance to come out of some tight spots and so a lot of times that's where I end up hitting it with the saw blade and taking some plastic out of them but that's why I get the plastic ones it doesn't bother the the chainsaw chain teeth at all it doesn't really dull them at all but definitely got to have these um, whenever I'm out cutting wood because there's a pretty good chance I'm going to bind my chainsaw up. All right, next thing is my, uh, basically, I call it my forestry pack. This is a Eberly stock. I think it's called the Bandit, the Bandit model. Um, it's not a super big bag. Uh, pretty, pretty slim form factor. But I'm able to pack a lot of stuff in it. <coughs> I'll set this to the side for now. Keep that hard helmet uh, strapped on the back there. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, but wanted to wanted to go over this axe real quick. So, like I said, Grand Forest Brooks small forest axe. Uh, I believe this is a Swedish made forged axe. It's got a nice hickory handle on it. I put that little green stripe on the end of all my uh, wooden handle tools, just sort of as a signature and identifier if I'm ever using my tools with other people around. But this is a great axe. It's perfect size. Like I said, it fits right in that number four Grizzly Peak Enterprises scabbard. And I just keep it on my belt once I get on site and I'm running the saw and I'm sort of moving all over. I use it for uh, trimming smaller limbs as well as knocking those wedges in whenever I'm having to put those wedges in to get myself out of a bind or get a tree to go over the direction I want it to go over. But this is a great combo. Having this axe, pretty much like a hand and a half. It's not a big, not a big double-handed uh, felling axe. You can use it single-handed, which I do most of the time. But you can also get that second hand on there if you need a little extra power. So, Grand Force Brooks Small Forest Axe.
Next thing, some more PPE. This is a skull bucket, aluminum hard hat, obviously the orange color. Got adjustable headgear in there. It works. Um, I like this over the plastic hard hats that I use at work sometimes. Um, I just, I, I don't know, I find it more comfortable and it does the job. Nothing, nothing too crazy about the hard hat, but definitely good to have one of those, especially if you're felling trees and you got branches and stuff coming down as your trees are falling down. Definitely want to have a hard hat. <clears throat> I run these Bugs goggles. So basically, this is a pair of goggles. It's not a glass or a plastic lens. It's like a mesh screen in there you can sort of see. Uh, it keeps you from getting anything fogged up. If you've done any sort of strenuous labor with a pair of safety glasses or goggles or face shield on in any amount of humidity, you know that it fogs up pretty much immediately. You get that sweat going, just a little bit of heat from your face will fog up your glasses. So these uh, mesh sort of safety goggles eliminate that, which is super nice. I keep two pairs of gloves with me at all times. <clears throat> Basically, this is just a uh, rubber coated pair of knit gloves and then a pair of, I think these are deer skin, buckskin leather gloves. These obviously have seen their better days. I need to replace those. Um, sort of on the search for a an American made pair of good deer skin. We believe these are basically, I think they call them the driver style gloves, work gloves, but I've worn these, obviously I've worn them out. I've had these for several years. I think I just got these at a local farm store, but I'm gonna be on the lookout for an American made brand. If anybody knows of an American made brand of deer skin uh, work gloves, go ahead and leave a comment down there. Let me know. Opening up the pack in this top section. Sort of dedicated this top section to my first aid kit. <clears throat> I had my first aid kit in a pouch and when that oil can flipped over in the back of my truck, it completely saturated that pouch. So uh, really need to actually buy a new pouch to put back on my belt. But for now, I've just been keeping everything in this top accessible um, pocket of this bag. We'll get everything out and then I'll sort of go through everything that I keep in here. Alright, so first aid kit when I'm out doing any sort of outdoors work, forestry, um, anything in the outdoors basically. This is the basic kit that I keep with me. <clears throat> Sterile gauze pads with tape to apply those to any cuts or scrapes. Uh, basically, just trying to protect the areas, stop any superficial bleeding that needs to be stopped until I can get out of the woods, back home, or to a hospital if need be, with the tape and the gauze. Probably the most important thing in this kit, especially when you're working with axes, saws, chainsaws, anything, is tourniquets. <clears throat> I keep two of these uh, cat tourniquets from North America, North American Rescue, go get them, keep them with you, not just in your saw kit, but I keep one in my truck, uh, one in my backpack I take to work, two in this backpack. One of these sort of floats between some different places. If we're getting in my wife's car and stuff like that, I'll pull one of these out and bring it with us. She also keeps one in her car. Um, but tourniquets, you, you really can't have enough of them in enough places. If you don't take anything else from this video, get some tourniquets. Buy them straight from North American Ref Rescue. Don't get the ones on Amazon because um, they've been known to be counterfeits. You, that's definitely not something you want to skimp out on. You don't want to save 10 bucks to end up with a broken windlass on your tourniquet and bleed out. Um, I gotta get some more of these, um, but I also keep these with me. This is a, basically a little sterile eye wash uh, vial. Just a little plastic tube with some sterile uh, saline solution in there. <clears throat> you can use it for eye wash if you get something in your eyes, as well as irrigating any sort of cuts or abrasions, anything like that, getting the dirt and whatnot out of them before you wrap them up with your gauze. Uh, 
Here, just a handful of normal Band-Aids, just for those little bobos and whatnot you always end up running into out in the woods. Uh, and then two of these uh, Israeli bandages, I believe they're called. Um, so basically just a, just a six inch wide ace bandage, for lack of better terms, that you wrap around and sort, you can sort of cinch tight and it helps control bleeding um, on big, big issues. So between the tourniquets and these guys, you have a much better chance of getting out, getting to an ambulance, getting to a hospital, anything like that, if you have a bad accident while out doing some chainsawing. Next thing in the bag, this is my uh, chainsaw toolkit. Basically, these are the tools that I would use if something were to go more wrong than just the chain popping off. I also keep extra oil in here. Uh, this is that oil that I use, the HP Ultra, the steel brand HP Ultra. Um, keep a spare pull handle and pull cord as well as a spare spark plug in there. Keep another scrunch handy. Little screwdriver for carburetor adjustments if need be. This is where I keep my extra chain. Uh, just keeps it right here in this pouch. Always have that extra chain with me. <clears throat> as well as a filing kit. So round file, handle for the round file, flat file, and uh, I guess it's a depth gauge for the, I guess I call them rakers on the chainsaw. You gotta knock those down as you file so you can keep that nice sharp tooth in the wood. That's pretty much all I keep in this tool kit. This pouch came from Recycled Firefighter. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy, he makes a bunch of stuff. Uh, a bunch of different products out of a uh, recycled fire hose, which is super cool, super durable, um, and it's held up well. This is my main uh, sharpening tool for the chainsaw. This is the steel two-in-one chainsaw sharpener. It's got the flat file to adjust or to file down the height of the rakers, as well as the round file to sharpen the teeth of your chain. Uh, I found it to work really well. I know some people don't necessarily like it. Some, some folks are just all old school and only want a round file with a handle on it. But as a pretty much novice to chainsaw work, I, I find this handy. You butt it up against the bar, it sets the right angle for you. And then you just push through the tooth and uh, touch up your chain <coughs> using that. I keep a spare bar. This is a bar that matches. It's the same bar that I have on the chainsaw now. Um, I just keep it with me as well as that spare chain in the pouch. If I really get into a bind and I can't use my wedges to get the bar and chain out, I know I can just take the existing bar and chain off the saw, throw this and my spare chain on there and have a pretty good chance of uh, getting my work done and getting out of the woods safely. Last thing in this bag is the Silky Saw. This is the Silky Zubat. It's a 330 millimeter version. I believe it's 75 tooth uh, blade on there. Um, this is the Silky Professional version. They have some different versions. I'm not 100% sure what the differences are in them. I know they have a couple different lengths, a couple different uh, saw blades where the you have a different number of teeth per inch, so some are more aggressive, some are less aggressive. But I really love this saw. It does a heck of a job with small little saplings and small limbs. <clears throat> you can even cut some bigger limbs. It may take a little bit longer, uh, but I've cut two and a half, three inch uh, diameter limbs on both uh, pine and oak, and it does great with all of those. 
the scabbard has a built-in spot for the belt clip that I pointed out was on my uh, rigging belt. So if I know I'm going to be dealing with a bunch of little saplings and stuff that I don't necessarily want to run the chainsaw through, I'll go ahead and clip this onto my belt and just have it on my hip ready to go when I need it. Alright guys, well that is going to wrap up this video. I know that went a little bit long, but I wanted to go ahead and cover all the stuff that I bring with me whenever I go out into the woods, running the chainsaw, doing a little bit of forestry projects here and there. Like I said, check that description for links. For everything that you see that has an Amazon link, it will be linked down in the description. Um, those links give me a little bit of a kickback, but they keep the same price for you. Uh, put that kickback, that little little bit of money that comes my way from Amazon from those links I dump it right back into the uh, growing of the YouTube channel buying new gear equipment camera stuff um, camera equipment and whatnot it's not cheap these days so it's nice to just be able to reinvest that money in the channel and try to up my production value for you guys All right valued viewers so if you haven't already click that subscribe button Subscribe to the channel. There's more uh, chainsaw work I need to get done, so I'll be filming that as I do it. Use those links down in the description if you need to buy any of this sort of kit. Leave me some comments down there. Let me know if there's something that you keep in your chainsaw kit that you think I should add to mine. Uh, and let me know if you found value in this video. Let me know if there's anything else you want to go more in depth with. I sort of breeze through all the different stuff I keep with me. Didn't really give super uh, in-depth explanations on anything so if there's anything you want more detail on go ahead and let me know down in the comment section hit that thumbs up just that simple click of the button hitting that thumbs up helps grow the channel a bunch helps get these videos out in front of more people which is super awesome um, with that said I think we're going to wrap this one up here I hope you all enjoyed it I hope you all have a good one we'll catch you next time down here on the south coast